Welcome to Conceptual Academy. Let me cut right to the most important message. Conceptual Academy is chock full of resources to help you learn, and this includes hundreds of online lectures. But what about the textbook? Conceptual Academy is not a substitute for the textbook. Rather, it complements the textbook. To succeed in this course, you must work with both Conceptual Academy and the textbook. My experience is that the number one reason students do not do well is that they simply do not open the textbook. Even after spending so much money for that book, it sits idle. That's plain wrong. The textbook is a centerpiece of your education. To succeed, you need to make good use of it. Conceptual Academy is easy. Find your video lecture, sit back, relax, and watch. Maybe take notes. Definitely take the video quiz to earn credit for having watched the lecture. The textbook is a bit different, and I understand that many of you may not quite know yet how to study properly from a science textbook. So let me give you a quick tour. Within each chapter, there are two main features. One, the content of the paragraphs and illustrations, and two, what we call the end of chapter questions, EOC for short. The paragraphs are dense. It's important that you read slowly for comprehension. But when you first sit down with these paragraphs, your main goal should be no more than an introduction. So please do not read these paragraphs multiple times. You're far better off reading just once. But then, after you read a paragraph or section, ask yourself the ultimate question. What did I just learn? Then, do yourself a favor and actually answer that question in writing, or better yet, aloud. You'll stumble. It won't feel comfortable, but that's normal. Giving an answer to the question, what did I just learn, is perhaps the toughest thing to do, but it's also the most productive thing to do in terms of learning. But still, at this point, don't dwell on deep understanding. Remember that your initial goal in reading the textbook is nothing more than an introduction. If you don't quite understand it all, that's okay. Move on. Read once and periodically ask yourself, what did I just learn? It's an awesome first step, but only a first step. Mastering this material will come later as you work on problem solving. But you might wonder, how can I possibly solve problems if I don't first understand the ideas. If that's your thinking, you've got it all backwards. When you work on the problems, that's when you're fleshing out the ideas, making sense of them, incorporating them into your worldview. Let me put it this way. How can you possibly understand the ideas if you don't work on the problems? You'll come to the problems with a hazy understanding. That's how it should be. But as you work on the problems, and only as you work on those problems, that hazy understanding solidifies into a rock-solid perspective as to what's really going on. And that's when you start acing your exams. Like it or not, problem-solving is the ultimate learning experience. Problem-solving begins with the second main feature of each chapter, which are the end-of-chapter questions. Hey, guess where many of the exam questions actually come from? That's right, the EOC. Am I clear? Of course, ideally you work on both the chapter content and the EOC. In practice, you'll likely find yourself going back and forth between the two. For a typical college course, you should dedicate at least 14 hours a week of study outside of class. That's what you should be doing. Hey, take your education seriously. Treat it like a full-time job. That would be 40 hours a week. Only 14 hours for this course leaves you plenty of time for other courses. We're telling you, what's needed is 14 quality hours a week, and not all crammed the night before the exam, but spaced out nice and evenly. If you spend less than 14 hours of quality time study, Poor exam results should come as no surprise. You are hereby notified. Whatever amount of time 
14 hours, right? You're able to devote each week about half of that time should be dedicated to studying the textbook paragraphs as well as the resources available to you here at Conceptual Academy. The second half of your time should be spent working on the EOC and other homework assignments. That means seven hours of reading the textbook and watching online lectures, followed by seven hours of practicing problems each week. That's it. These are the secret ingredients to succeeding in a science course. Oh, um, there's another. Learning science is a challenge, but it's a very rewarding challenge. Don't be surprised if you find yourself actually enjoying this course, especially given its conceptual flavor. The concepts you'll be learning here are fairly straightforward, I promise you. It's just that there are many of these concepts, and they're all interrelated. To capture it all with a bird's eye view requires no super brain power, but it does require time on task. As you're about to discover, how well you do will primarily be a function of your motivation. Blend it in with the help from your instructor, who is there to help, like a coach. Listen carefully to your instructor's advice. Be proactive in your learning. Seek your instructor's help as needed, and you are on the road to doing quite well. Good chemistry to you. Mm -hmm.